Yo, what's up guys? And um, tonight I thought I'd do a video covering the hottest subject when it comes to OLEDs, pun intended, and that is screen burn. Now, before I get into this video, I do want to point out that there is no magic fix or there is no secret button hidden in the menu that says uh, turn off burning. It's, it's not there. There is no miracle cure for it. Um, it is a real thing and any OLED can get burning. That is a fact. So these videos may just help you lessen the chance of you getting any burning. So moving on, I do want to point out one other thing and that is what is burning? A lot of people ask me this question, you know, what is it? How do you get it? Um, most, most of you, you guys probably do know what it is and how you get it but for those of you who don't burning occurs when you leave uh, generally a static image in one place for a prolonged period of time how long that time is is debatable again i love to be able to turn around to you and say hey if you if you watch tv with a logo up in a corner for five hours straight you know it's going to be fine five hours and one minute you're going to get burning it don't happen like that there's so many variables to take into account such as how bright you have your tv how long is the logo left up there what color is the logo how you know um what how bright is that logo itself um how long you leave it on the screen for and the other thing that people don't seem to think about is they always think about just one logo but if you have uh, let's say a Sky Sports logo up in the corner for say four hours. Yes, you change content, you say go to BBC, but if BBC logo is in exactly the same sort of spot with the same colour, let's say red, it's still overlapping the same pixels that it was before, so it's continuing to degrade those picture, pixels which will cause burning. Um, put it in simple terms. Let's look at an OLED TV screen like a new carpet. Now, if you get that new carpet and you walk over it just randomly, that carpet is going to wear pretty much evenly. There is going to be no real obvious parts of the carpet that have worn out more than the other. But if you continue to walk over one section of the carpet, say down the middle, time and time again, you are going to notice over time a wear mark. And that is exactly what you are doing on your TV. You are wearing out one area of the TV more than another. And just like I said about with the logos, just because you change a logo, if it's the same sort of uh, colour and the same spot, it's like, right, I'm not walking over that one piece of carpet, but if I get a friend to walk over it, it's still being worn. It doesn't matter that it's changed. It's still being you know, worn in the same place. So you will suffer with that. Um, so yeah it, it is a hard thing to judge of how long you know you can watch things for i mean i'll give you an example my son has played some games recently for four hours in a row he played um i can't remember what i think it was uh call of duty and that had like a heads up display thing that was on there yeah for four hours and that was fine hasn't caused any problems now if he continues to do that day after day after day it may be an issue but because then in between we are mixing up we are watching other programs and that so far it's not been a problem now that ain't to say in 12 months time it may be a problem i don't know but with a few of the uh things i'm going to suggest you guys may help reduce um you know that wear and the risk of you leaving an image on there longer than maybe you should do and you know that might not be intentional either so anyway that's enough of me jabbering on so let's head off into the lounge and i'll show you some of these uh, tips let's crack on right so the uh, first thing i'm going to cover is uh, a few settings that should be at the box set uh, set up as standard but uh, they may not be so you might want to just double check these so what you want to do is go to the picture settings and then down to OLED panel settings first one we're going to look at is the screen shifter now you want to make sure this one is turned on now what this does is moves the image um, 
left or right slightly. Now, when I first got the TV, I actually thought there was a problem with it because on the right hand side of the screen, the pixels weren't actually lining up properly. Um, they do at the moment. And a few hours later, I noticed that they were matching up on the right hand side, but not on the left. And it turns out it's the actual screen shifter. When it's doing that, if you actually turn it on and off, you will see the actual image moving left and right a bit. So that should, you know, help prevent uh, a bit of screen burn. And the next one is your logo luminance adjustment. This one I set to low. So if you've got any uh, static logos up in up in the corner of the uh, screen, this should help reduce the brightness of those and in turn help reduce the the risk of burn. Again, if you know even if it's on and you leave it on all day, you, you know you're still going to probably run the risk of getting some screen burn. Right, let's move on to the third one, which is the pixel refresher. Now, this itself doesn't help prevent uh, you getting any uh, screen burn, but what it does do is if you've got the, the starts or you know light screen burn, you can run this. It runs for, um, I think it's an, an hour. You can opt to start it yourself manually, or it will start by itself after you've turned off the TV. And that will basically try and cleanse the screen and get rid of any screen burn that you have. Now, if the screen burn is particularly intense, it probably will not work, but it's worth giving it a couple of goes. You know, you've got nothing to lose by trying it. Also to note that after every four hours of use, the screen uh, will run a refresh in the background anyway, when you've turned the TV off. I think that runs for 20 minutes just to try and keep the uniformity of the screen. Right, so let's move on to the next one again. Right, for the next one, you're going to need to go to uh, General and then to Eco Mode. Now, in Eco Mode, you have got a Auto Power Off and out of the box, mine was set to four hours. I recommend setting this to the lowest amount, which is two hours. And what that does is after uh, two hours of no input from the remote control, it will automatically turn off the TV. Now this is Andy, if you know you happen to fall asleep watching a film or something like that, or you know you've just generally left the TV on, forgot about it, at least you know that the worst case scenario, you know, two hours it will shut off. And in that sort of time frame, I'd be very surprised if you was to suffer from any permanent burning from leaving a static image up. So yeah, set that one to two hours. And let's move on to the next one. Right, for the next one, you're going to want to be in general. And you're going to want to go to Simplink or Simple Link. And I recommend setting Auto Power Sync to off. Now, it's a good feature. Um, when it's on, what you do with it is if you've got, say, Skybox, you know, any sort of external box, um, you can have your TV off, and when you turn that box on, it will also turn on the TV. Problem with that is, in the past, I've had my box that randomly has just turned itself on in the night. I've been in bed, and then I've come down in the morning, and the TV's been on all night. Luckily, this has happened when I've had my old LCD and not on this TV. And also, my Skybox seems to have a habit of sometimes when you turn it off, you press the power button, um, and it will come back on again for some reason. Once you've gone to turn it off, it will just kick back in again, sort of within about five to 10 seconds. Uh, again, sort of just after I've given you enough time to sort of walk out of the room, quite often I've walked out and I've heard the TV like sort of chattering away to herself. Um, so that one, you know, could save you potentially getting screen burn. You know, if you was to go off on holiday thinking you've turned it all off and, you know, for whatever reason you, your box kicks back into life or something like that, it could save, you know, your TV getting absolutely ruined. So I personally would turn it off. Right, the next one, you're going to want to be in general and you want to select timers and timer power off. Now this one ain't really so much of a tip or trick really, but I just thought, you know, it might be worth mentioning about maybe setting a timer for when you're using, you know, your, your PlayStation or you're watching a film. If you want to limit yourself, you know, it's a bit of a reminder. And also, if, again, you're watching, say, a film, you can, say, set a timer for a couple of hours. 
if you fall asleep, it's not a problem. And with the joy of this one is um, you can interact with the remote control and it has no bearing on how long before it shuts off. You know, if you set it for two hours, it will shut off after two hours, no matter how much input you have with the TV. So it's just worth bearing in mind that one. Let's move on to the uh, the final one. And for the final one, I'm going to recommend, and that is to use the built-in apps. Now, if you're like me and you've got something like a Skybox or any other sort of external box that is, has apps such as, it, as these, I'd personally recommend using the ones built into the TV because if for some reason, you know, you leave an image up on the screen for longer than two minutes that is static, it will turn on an automatic screensaver, whereas a, an external device, it will not trigger that. So just be warned, an external device will not automatically trigger the screensaver. Um, I'll leave this now for a couple of minutes and by the magic of TV, I'll show you what a screensaver is like. And there we have it, the Firework screensaver. And that will happily run for hours on end with no risk of uh, screen burn whatsoever. So yeah, like I said, if you can use the inbuilt apps, you know, might save the screen. And there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed that video and you found it useful. If you have, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, uh, even subscription would be great. Uh, thanks very much to my current subscribers for uh, keeping the channel going and that. Really appreciate your views. And we're coming up for, I think it's the 220 mark for subscribers now, really pleased about that. I uh, didn't think I'd actually get this this high this quick, to be honest. So, yeah, thanks a lot for you guys for supporting us. Um, so, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.